Hello there and welcome to yet another basics video that is absolutely not going to be a basics video at all because I want to take a little bit deeper dive on technicalities around neural and modular and also uh, I want to explain impulse responses and so that you can use them correctly or, or incorrectly uh, as long as you know what you're doing everything is okay uh, so let's just you know jump right into the business and neural and modular is something you can go just and download Neuralmodeller.com, it's free open source plugin created by Steven Atkinson. And um, it's just a plugin that can load profiles and impulse responses. And profiles and impulse responses you can get from internets. It can mimic existing guitar setups, amps, cabinets, even pedals, and so on and so on. Now let's break down the plugin itself. So the plugin that you see here in the in the website is uh, Kind of like a snapshot or concept plugin around NAM, and um, it can be easily broken into pieces because even within the plugin, the signal just flows like like it would be flowing in your guitar chord from section to section, from gate to EQ, and and so on and so on. Um, so what there is in the plugin, it can be broken into a mono signal path like this, and what we have there is. The input obviously and the input level and then we have the actual NAM the profile loader so the only thing that actually matters in this whole plugin that's there that's the profile selection and then there's a gate after that and then there's the impulse response and by the way the gate is after the NAM because the NAM is neural network based and even when you have basically zero input for it it can actually produce a little bit of noise which is why it's better to have the gate after the NAM than before the NAM. If you would be thinking about your amp, you would usually have your gate in front of the amp rather than after it. But in this, this uh, case, you, you usually have it after. And uh, yeah, and then there's just the EQ and the output. But as you can see, like everything else is just convenience except for the actual profile loader. And the profile loader, obviously, 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 all of us guitarists know we have our amps here and our cabinets. Remember, amp and a cabinet, you need them both, otherwise it doesn't sound good. Amp is outputting a single into the cabinet. So a single goes into the cabinet and then sound comes out of the cabinet, which is captured with a microphone somewhere around the speaker there in some room. And obviously that produces a single out. So you have a single in or an impulse, and then you get a response out of that impulse. And that's an age old thing to do. So you capture impulse response of the cabinet uh, using specific um, impulses that record a specific kind of wave file. And that can be loaded using whatever impulse response loader and added, added in between any single path anywhere uh, it doesn't have to be even a guitar you can put it to your voice if you want and then it will sound like your voice would be coming out of a uh, guitar cabinet that was captured and that's how it works profile loader obviously is your amp it's, it's the capture of someone's amp in using some settings or it can also be the amp and a pedal or just a pedal and the input response is the cabinet, except that there are also captures that can capture impulse responses as NAM, but also the full rig that has everything as a NAM, in which case you obviously would be just loading that profile that has all of those captures within it, and you would not use the impulse response with them. So this is what you kind of need to know, that the NAM profiles are different so they are captures of different things and if it's a capture of a full rig then you don't put impulse response after that if it's a capture that doesn't have the uh, cabinet then you will apply impulse response after that now let's go to you know back to the uh, computer and i'm here in linux and uh, i can load here i have my live single going through right now when i'm doing this video so uh, i can load some pluggies into Kala. I can root my singles here in patches and also in color, but patches just looks a little bit nicer in, in my opinion. Um, so 
if I would want to put neural emulator, I would not actually in Linux use the concept plugin. I would just want to use the core because I want to do my single chain completely. I don't want to use the, the gate that is in the concept plugin or I don't want to use the EQ that is in the concept plugin. I want to add those myself. And here is the LV2 version of the NAM created by Mike Oliphant. So, so that we can run those NAM profiles in Linux in our single paths. So in Kala, I would just actually, uh, or in, in Reaper or also in um, Ardor, whatever, but you can load these plugins anywhere. I'll just load the uh, Neural Amp Modeler. Neural Amp Modeler. And now it's loaded as a plugin here. I could go here to the patch bay and do some routing, but I kind of don't like the Kala patch bay anymore because it's kind of messy. And the uh, the batch, batch bay or patchens is a little bit nicer looking. So now when I loaded the plugin, I have it here. Um, and I can just route that my input zero, which is my input one in my audio interface, goes directly to the NAM. If we go back for the uh, this one, so that's the NAM. The actual NAM. So after that, we would need to add a gate if we want. I will use ZAM gate. And now if we go to here, we can find the gate and we can put that the output of the NAM goes to input of the gate and like that. And then after the gate, there was an impulse response. So let's put that. Let's add whatever impulse response loader, IR Convolver, for instance, like that. And uh, it's here. Output to the input of the Convolver and then output of the Convolver. Now we could be also adding the EQ here or whatever post effects if we want, but let's just put that directly to my recording setup, which is being compressed by, by my microphone. So that is basically what the concept plugin does now obviously we need to load the profile and the impulse response into that and that we will do here in Kala because here is where i have the them loaded so i will just click on the gear icon here and i can go to load whatever profile i want so i will go to my nam models and maybe i don't know maybe let's take some clean if i have um jcm 2000 and also let's load a uh impulse response after that and for impulse response let's put what would be good with jcm so here i have my cabinet impulse responses maybe let's put a vox cabinet for that maybe something bright or maybe yeah let's let's try that one and now we should have a uh, impulse going through let's see <laughs> Oh, this, uh, it's a little bit slightly out of tune, but let's not care about that. I can also move my face a little bit there. Um, so, yeah. Um, so remember how there was in the plugin, there was the input level. So the input level controls how much my guitar signal is pushed to the NAM. And that actually matters because it matters how much you agitate the neural network that is there. So the um, basically the input level for the NAM is here. So there is an input and output as well. So this is kind of the only thing that matters as a, as a parameter for the NAM. So if I want to have a little bit more char characteristics out of that, so then I would be, you know, putting the input level a bit higher. And I noticed it was a little bit loud, maybe otherwise. Yeah, I'm just lowering the, uh, the output volume a little bit. But let's see. Maybe a bit loud, so let's put a little bit down still. Yeah, so that's JCM2000 using some Vox cabinet. How about we try one of those that I always use? So I always use these original impulses. Let's, let's put impulse... Uh, 
Guitar Hat's original between. So notice how much it changed because the the impulse response actually does quite a lot for the single. Um, let's try something completely different. Marshall JCM nine hundred. I can really hear the echo in this impulse response, so this has been recorded in a uh, quite a large room, or empty room. Yeah, and so on. Or then we can load whatever other capture as well. Or let's actually load another one. Let's go for Tone 3000 here and let's search something like uh, someone just asked for Vox. Vox AC30, I think. Now let's see. Yes, we can find. And here we can see that this is actually a full rig capture here. Oh, my face is again there on the way. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so here we have a Vox S1 series full rig capture, so this wouldn't need an impulse response. Uh, also here a full rig. Here is only an amp head. Um, let's try a full rig. Let me download that one. And it comes out as a zip file, which I will just extract here. And we have three different NAM models in this. I should have written probably um, read what is what it says here, but yeah, I'm too lazy. We have three different Vox AC30 models, clean, crunch, and crunch lead. So let's try those. Let's we need to remove the impulse response because we don't want that to be now enabled. So I will just disconnect that. So I will just keep it like that. So now we don't have the impulse response there at all. And now let's just load the uh, Vox it's in my downloads, Vox, and let's try the clean. It's almost at, at the breaking point there. Uh, I'm pushing the level quite a lot high there, but it's a clean. Uh, let's try the crunch. Oh yeah. Yeah, how about the one more word was there? Crunch lead. Yeah, that's it. How about we try to add an impulse response after that? Because that already has an impulse response. So I wonder how it would sound. Um, there was a word for that, that you would be putting impulse response after impulse response. I remember Glenn saying that in some some of his videos. Number nine, impulse inception. Now you it is something that you're not supposed to do. You're not, you're not supposed to put an impulse response after impulse response which already was baked into the NAM model. Um, so let's put an impulse response. Let's put the original three. <laughs> I 
I mean, like, it doesn't sound like super bad. Okay, so this is all I have for you about NAM and impulse responses, and hopefully you now understand them well enough to actually use them or misuse them. And another thing that I went a slightly quickly there was that Tone Hunt, which I have been saying is the best source of the models, it's now known as Tone 3000. And uh, uh, it's just, there's a merger of things that has been happening. Tone 3000 was a place where you can actually create your own captures of your own gear. And uh, now they have joined forces. So you can actually here in Tone 3000, you have all the models that used to be in Tone Hunt, but you can also actually send your own captures or train your own captures here on this web service, all for free. So for a love of God, go there and <laughs> this world will open up for you. It is a big, big world for us home guitarists. Nope, see ya.